Oh, wow, I can't believe I didn't cover that properly. All right, so I never really intended to do this video, but um, I tweeted out about this a while ago and I kind of went, well, I'm moving to X99 on my personal rig. Um, I really like the Rampage 5 Extreme. I like that it has a PS2 port. It's just the best board I've ever used in terms of general stability and, and awesomeness. It's got a lot of great features, blah, 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 all that stuff, but it's red. I kind of went, okay, so I could use the WS board, um, which does not have Wi-Fi. It doesn't have a PS2 port, which for me is pretty handy. It doesn't even have USB 2 ports, which for me are still kind of a necessity due to driverlessness and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of went, okay, guys, poll time. Should I use the WS or should I paint the Rampage 5 Extreme blue? And it was basically unanimous. Linus, paint the motherboard blue. And I kind of went, well, okay then. So, um... I started things off by taking off the heat sinks from the back of the motherboard using my screwdriver. Uh, basically, you got to take off the Southbridge heat sink, the, uh, the VRM heat sink on the back of the board, the little illuminated ROG heat sink, as well as the, uh, the VRM heat sink that sits as, and covers the IO as well um, with a little plate here. And so now that that's all done, uh, this is pretty much it. We have stripped down the board and the plan. This, we're, 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 basically, we're basically in like uncharted, uncharted waters here. I know that Paul Tan has done this before. I believe that uh, Rich Soros has done something like this before, although you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, painting motherboards is not something that's typically done. So there's a few different ways. I've seen people actually do it with, with nail polish, but there's a lot to do on here and we're not gonna take that approach. So we have three different sizes of painters green tape we're gonna mask off this board as best we can we are actually going to paint over some of the sockets that we are actually planning to use such as the PCI Express slots here we're gonna try not to get a ton of paint in them but then we're going to uh, try to remove the paint from the contacts in order to make them functional again we may end up with a dead board we may not I have no idea how this is gonna go down so uh, here we go Ah, oh, the memory slots. I kind of feel like the longer I put these off, the tougher it's going to be on me if I don't just kind of figure out a way to tackle it. So these ones have moving parts, and I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll leave them kind of loose so I can try and fill in as much as I can. No, I think I'll leave them closed because I can get good coverage on them closed, and that way I won't interfere with any of the moving, the moving bits. If it wasn't for these caps, I wouldn't have any trouble with this. I mean, the same can be said for any of this. If it wasn't for this being covered in things that I don't want to paint, All right, so the taping is now complete. It's not as perfect as I would have liked. Um, actually, I see one gap right now that I'll definitely have to uh, close up somehow. But what I'm hoping is that uh, we will get a good enough result that it 
kind of achieves what we were kind of trying to achieve. Okay, yes, I'm being very vague about the goals. Functional board, and it looks like a blue board. That is what we are going for here, and if we can do that, then I will be, uh, I'll be pretty pleased. So uh, here we go. I think I've got the coverage as good as it's gonna get at this point. It's it's really not as good as I'd like. There's a, there's a lot of board components that are just so close to the slots that I, I can't I can't really spray in there properly. So um, all that's really left to do at this point then is start peeling it away and and kind of hope for the best here. Um, I don't think I got a ton of overspray on places where I, I didn't want it, but I do know that there was some. So, um, oh yeah, I can already, oh wow, I can't believe I didn't cover that properly. All right, well, there's a bunch on this PCI Express slot right here at the back. Oh, that is a real shame. So we actually, wow, we did. We got a nice clean line on those SATA ports. That looks really good. That's probably one of the, uh, one of the best finished parts of it. Now I've been told that in, in the biz, in the modding business, there's a term for something like this. I think they call it a, a 10 foot mod or something like that, <laughs> where it looks pretty good as long as you stay about 10 feet away. <laughs> I think that might be what we're looking at here. I think this is a 10 foot mod. Um, cause it actually looks not bad as long as you, as long as you don't get too close and look, uh, look at it under a magnifying glass. All right. Moment of truth for the memory slots. Let's find out how we did. Not too shabby. It's actually not bad. We got to do something about that overspray, but we'll, uh, we'll figure that out. So that's it for today. This ended up taking a lot longer than I was expecting and I don't have time to wrap things up and still get this video out today. So um, in the conclusion, we'll be finding out if the board actually works as well as covering how we're gonna hopefully get it to that working state, installing a 5960X Extreme Edition as well as a GTX 980 in it and uh, hopefully determining that at that point it'll be ready to put in my personal rig where it will live happily ever after, browsing web pages, uploading YouTube videos and gaming at 720p for me to stream to my Shield Portable. Speaking of streaming, today's episode sponsor, Crunchyroll is an online anime streaming service designed for people who are passionate about anime and want to consume copious amounts of it. They've got top series like Attack on Titan and Sword Art Online, and all the most current episodes of new stuff like The Testament of Sister New Devil, Cute High Earth Defense Club Love, and Psycheno, How to Raise a Boring Girlfriend, as well as many others. New episodes are available as early as one hour after they debut in Japan with professional subtitles, so the only drawback is, well, you have to pay for it, but it's reasonably priced, and if you go to crunchyroll.com slash Linus, you can get a 30-day trial for free to give it a shot. So thanks Crunchyroll for sponsoring this episode. Thanks you for watching it. Like if you liked, dislike if you disliked, leave a comment if your feelings are more complicated than this. Check out the link in the video description to support us. You can buy a cool t-shirt like this one. Oh, I screwed it up. You can change your bookmark at Amazon to one with our affiliate code, or you can just straight up give us a monthly contribution if you love the content we make and you think we should keep doing it. Thanks again for watching, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.